This is a Dreamcast disc and is for use only on a Dreamcast unit. Playing this disc on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Dreamcast, up to six billion players. Welcome back to the stage of history. Why don't we play together? Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go! Please stop this disc now. Now, 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 now. Welcome to episode 14 of the Dreamcast Junkyard Dream Pod. My name is Tom, and as ever, I'm joined by my co host, Rob. Rob, how's it going? Yeah, it's good, man. It's really good. Uh, Rob, I- I'm going to let you into a bit of a secret. I'm a bit nervous because we've got two like really special guests on the-, on the podcast today. I've got a question for you, though, Rob. Yeah. Will you hold my hand? Only if you hold mine. Okay. <laughs> Without further ado, let's introduce the first of our special guests. Um, well, he's a, a man whose face is all over the internet, uh, mainly in video form. Uh, it's a uh, YouTube sensation, Adam Korolik. Adam, how are you? Hey, how you doing? I was going to say, who's the sensation? What are you talking about? Oh, it's you. It's you. you know? <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> You've um, literally just broke the 60,000 subscribers, Mark, on YouTube. I'm um, actually just under 65,000 at the moment. Yeah. Oh, I apologize. I apologize. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. Um, and you, I mean, you're famous for your, um, well, the reason we wanted to get you on is because you're a massive fan of the Dreamcast. I believe he said that the Dreamcast was your favorite console. Yeah, I like it. It's all right. It's not bad. Yeah, it's all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have. I, I love the Dreamcast. Uh, I got a full game set for it. All games worldwide. I. I just. I don't know. Unhealthy obsession with that console. I really enjoy it. I still get the brand new ones too. I. I don't know when this is going up exactly, but I'll have a new video on the Dreamcast for its birthday, uh, oh. September 9th. Oh, uh, yeah, for 2015. So 9-9-15, uh, yep. yeah. Fantastic. Um, obviously, you, you've been on the podcast previously. Um, couple of, yeah, that was fun. Uh, yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Unfortunately, Caleb couldn't make it today. The man with the perfect voice for radio couldn't make it. Uh, um, yeah, he's working. But uh, he says hello, and uh, I'm sure he'll uh, be in the comments. Well, hi, Caleb. <laughs> and uh, moving on swiftly, our second guest, a very special guest, and thank you, thank you so much for coming on the on the Dream Pod, um, is a man whose voice needs no introduction. He was the voice of Ryo Hazuki in Shenmue. It's Corey Marshall. Hey, Corey. Hello. Hi, everyone. I just want to again say thank you so much for for coming on to the onto the podcast. I, I was literally playing Shenmue about half an hour ago, and now to be actually speaking to you after hearing. Ryu Hazuki, uh, you know, go about his daily uh, business is is quite surreal, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 fun being me and actually playing the game because then then you, then you really get a head trip. So, <laughs> um, that, awesome. That, that that leads me on to the sort of a question that I've actually had in the back of my mind for a while. Um, I take it you've you've played through Shenmue and you've you know finished it and everything. Yeah, sure. You know, I I when when the games came out, sure, I went out and actually bought my own copy. I went into the store just like everybody else and bought my own copy of the game. And uh, ended up playing uh, as much as I could, man. You know, I, I've I've said this before, but some of the uh, some of the some of those secrets are actually hard to get to. Some of those secret battles and stuff like that. Yeah. And 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 I, and I was like, man, I voiced this game. Like I've <laughs> I've done all these secrets, and I can't even find them all. So props to everybody out there who can find them. I was going to say, um, when you kind of went into the shop, I'm guessing that it was only just it only just been released, so people wouldn't have played it yet and wouldn't recognize your voice but later on if you went into a shop and could you just go hmm i see and then people would kind of (laughs) recognize your voice (laughs) you know it's funny um i'm not sure what it is maybe because um when i speak to people i am obviously a lot more conversational than uh than the game yeah so I, i i guess people don't recognize my voice as much so i mean i i've i've uh i even worked with uh a guy when I was working for a company called Megatrend, I was doing some, uh, some film producing. Okay. And uh, I had worked with a guy actually for a while. I think it had actually been a few months at this point. And the conversation, we were talking about video games and stuff like that and talking about old games. And I was like, well, actually, I used to, I, I did some voices for games. And he's like, oh, really? What game? And I talked about Shenmue. And he was like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? <laughs> he's like, that's one of my favorite games. I love that game. And so, working with me that whole time, he didn't realize that I was actually that Corey Marshall, and he was actually a huge fan of the game. So, 
yeah, people still don't recognize my voice, which I, I think is pretty interesting. But. Yeah, yeah. And um, leading on from that, I mean, when I listen back to this podcast, when I'm editing it, I kind of cringe at my own voice. I was wondering what it's like for you playing Shenmue and hearing your own voice kind of constantly. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> do you think, do I, do I sound like that? <laughs> yeah, you know, the thing is, is that... Um, we kind of had a very a certain style that we were supposed to stick to when we were voicing this game so that's why the the game sounds the way it does right we we voiced it that way believe it or not on purpose um because we were instructed to do it that way mm -hmm. so we when i hear it i hear um basically the instruction that i was giving and so, yeah, when I hear it back, I think, okay, that's that's kind of the character that I was supposed to play. So when I went in, and I I even even during my audition, I kind of played this character. I think that's probably why I got it because I played this very stoic, very um, you know, a, a young man who thinks about what he says before he says it, and says it in a very. Uh, I don't want to say melodic, but but more like a like just a, just a very direct delivery, like right? A matter of fact, kind of thing. Yeah, very matter of fact. So I I auditioned that way, and I just kind of had this idea of a young man who, you know, his whole life, you know, his father is a master, and his whole life has has been in the martial arts, and so yeah, I kind of gave that delivery. Yeah. And yeah, they liked it that way, and sure enough, when we got there, they said, yeah, we want this character to be, you know, they said a very very Japanese character, you know. I, yes, we are we are translating it into English for certain audiences, but we wanted to have that very distinct Japanese. He's he is a very direct uh, speaker. So, so yeah. When, when I hear that, I kind of I kind of remember that and think, okay, sure. I wouldn't personally say it that way because <laughs> you know I'm an American, but. Uh, yeah, so when I hear it back, I, I just I remember that character and that feeling and 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 that with they that that instruction that they gave me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, Adam, you are a you're a massive fan of Shenmue the the whole series. Um, yeah, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Understatement of the century. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I mean, Adam, what's your kind of history? With, I mean, were you there day one as well? I mean, did you with Shenmue? Yeah. Um, ironically, no. When uh, when the game first came out, I, I really didn't care that much. Um, and then, you know, like a friend of mine rented it, and initially I didn't get it at all. I was like, "Why? What is? What's going on here? Why are we just running around? Why don't we hang out in that arcade?" You know, it took. I don't think I. Pl that was like ninety nine, two thousand. It must have been two thousand. So like, it wasn't until two thousand three where I kind of like tried the game again myself and i was like this is the greatest thing that has ever happened in the history of our species <laughs> you know uh but, but like my initial go through i didn't really see much of the point and that, i always tell people like let that be a lesson if the first time you ever tried that game you didn't really get it you know go back in time you know punch the younger version of yourself in the face and give it another shot because it's a fantastic <laughs> game yeah because yeah. even i who like i'm always out there telling people this game is phenomenal even my first go through i wasn't into it at all. I I have to um I have to on that note I have to say I've got a bit of a, a, a what's the word an admission to make when I first played it which would have been in about two thousand and four maybe two thousand and five I um I wrote an article on the Dreamcast Junkyard that, on the site that I just I didn't like it I didn't get it and I I think I described it as Wolfenstein three D but with nicer graphics because every door that you could come across you couldn't go in but then. Having, <laughs> which uh, I'm sorry, Corey, about that. But uh, <laughs> um, as I played it more and more, I just kind of got more and more absorbed into it, and I, I kind of thought I had completely the wrong opinion of this game. It's absolutely phenomenal, and then I went on to become like this massive advocate of how great the game is. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, sorry, Rob. Um, Rob, what's your? Um... I know those feels. <laughs> Uh, Rob, what's your history with Shenby? I mean, have you played it much? Or yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think I'm as big a big a fan of it as Adam. But yeah, certainly I have. I've played both the games, and um, yeah, obviously following on from the announcement recently, I, I've started to replay them too. I mean, speaking of that announcement, I was going to ask Corey if you ever thought prior to that announcement a third instalment would ever come. Hmm. You know, I suppose I was in the same camp as lots and lots and lots of individuals out there where I always had hope 
and and I never really gave up that hope. I, you know, the thing is, is that Shenmue, I, I've done a lot of stuff. You know, I've done a lot of things in the sure. entertainment industry. Everything from stage to, I used to be a professional dancer. I've done stunts. I used to do live stunts. I did stunts and music videos. I did, again, I did producing. I, you know, I just, all, just all the stuff that I've done. You know, when I look back at the some of my favorite projects or i should say really just my favorite project is shenmu and i loved voicing shenmu and i love the character i love i love hazuki you know I, I don't know there's just something about shenmu that is unique and special for for me and so many people out there and i i guess i was in that camp where i just never gave up hope because hey i wanted to come back and do it Sure. Did you have any contact with you prior to the announcement? You know, I didn't. It was a very uh, super secret project, and uh, they did not tell me. I it, When I ended up uh, hearing about the announcement, I even called up some of my contacts in Japan. They didn't know anything about it either. And, when, you know, in fact, I remember there was the... Uh, when they did the announcement, they had another individual on there that kind of was doing my voice. So they they actually got somebody who kind of sounded like me. You know what I mean? And I think what they did was they kind of they kind of uh, had that sort of secret meeting. I think in Japan, right, where they just they they wanted to keep all all the uh, maybe listening ears out, and they just had uh, a very tight group of people who knew about it and worked on the project and then the announcement happened. So, Corey, I just wanted to ask about how you actually got involved with the with the project, like going right back to the beginning. Can you remember the very first time you actually heard the, the name Shenmue and, and what actually happened from the start? Yeah, you know, I um I was not oh you know, the game had already had already been created and I didn't know about it. It was in Japanese. Yeah. And so, yeah, when they brought me into this project, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about, you know, it, it's funny. I had never done voiceovers at that point and I was actually in college and I was studying, um, studying dance and I, I was still doing auditions for things here and there and stuff. And I was like, well, if anything really, you know, big comes my way, then I'll take it. Obviously. Were you an, an actor then? By sort of trade, were you? Is that what you were going into acting? Yeah, I had done a lot of um, live theater. In fact, that's my background. That's yeah. the first first thing that I had ever done. Really, mm -hmm. when I was very young, I started doing stage acting, and um, I had done that. And uh, of course, I was born and raised in Texas. I started doing that there, and I I have always had a love for live stage. There's nothing quite quite like the reaction of a live audience. So I, I still do love stage. So yeah, I was studying studying dance. I was doing uh, ballet and modern dance, if you can believe it. And uh, I had saw there actually there was an audition that was in a publication called the Backstage, which is actually just kind of like a, almost like a news publication yeah. for for the arts, and it also has auditions in there and stuff like that. And yeah, they had an audition and just said voiceover. I think it said uh, three to four months in Japan. To, to the voiceover for, for a video game. And I was like, hey, I, I want to go to Japan. Why not? Sure, yeah, I'll go. Yeah. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, so I, that, that was really sort of what had attracted me to it. And I kind of thought, like, I, I guess I could do voiceovers. I mean, I used to kind of just play around with my voice and do character voices and do silly sounds and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. I'll... Can you do some silly sounds now? Silly sounds now? Yes. Oh, man, I don't know. Now you got me like, <laughs> hold on, I got to get the microphone away from my face. Let's see, like, oh, like like, like Looney Tunes stuff, right? Yeah. I used to be like, <laughs> you know, just like, <laughs> weird stuff like that, right? <laughs> so I, I kind of thought, yeah, I'll go give it a shot. I don't know what I'm doing. I Like, I have no clue. I've never done voiceover before ever, so I'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. And yeah, when I went in there, I found out that, yes, this character is a, a martial artist. He's this young man. I thought, yeah, okay, well, I do have a martial arts background. I had been studying, um, I started out in Taekwondo. It was the only martial arts in town. I lived in a small town. And uh, I had started out doing that, and I had studied multiple things since then. I studied karate, and I studied, uh, I did kung fu, and I did, uh, actually, I did capoeira as well. All right. And uh, cool. so that, that was that was kind of fun. It was kind of like uh, dance and martial arts at the same time, you know, so it was kind of right up my alley. 
But yeah, so my background in uh, sort of this almost militaristic martial art in karate and taekwondo, I, I, I kind of was able to connect to that character. And that's why I said I really kind of brought that, that feeling, this very direct uh, feeling into this character. You know, very, if you can imagine how I was trying to imagine my voice as, as like karate moves, right? You know, so yeah. I was thinking, you know, I was thinking, okay, very, very hard, uh, you know, very straight line direct. It's almost, almost clipped. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, if anybody knows anything about the history of martial arts, various martial arts were developed for different reasons, you know, so I kind of had that idea in mind, and, and they, and it's funny, they, they asked me to do the voice, and I did it, and they said, that's great, and I thought, hmm, okay, and I, and I said, do you, do you want me to do anything else? Do you want me to do a different character? Do you want me to do... I could do younger, I could do older. They said, no, 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 that's good. I thought, okay, I guess either they don't like me or it was brilliant. So, <laughs> okay, I guess so. I guess I'll go home. And so, yeah, they, they didn't really make me do or say anything, you know. It was literally just like, no, that, that was good. Thank you very much, you know. And I thought, okay, all right, great. I guess I'll go home and I'll wait anxiously by the phone. And I thought, no, I'll, I'll, I don't know if I got that one. Oh, well, it was, it was worth a shot. Yeah. And yeah, two days later, they called me to come back in again, and I thought, hey, great. Oh, I guess maybe they did like it. Okay. So they had me come back in, and um, they had brought in a few other people. I think they said they had brought some uh, some people from Japan. I don't know if it was some uh, directorial team or if it was some producers or something like that. And um, they said... We want you to do it again, uh, like you did it last time, but just make the character a little bit younger. Just make him, you know, they said that maybe my voice was just a little, just a little deep. They said, maybe bring it up just, just a, just a pitch. Okay, so I gave it a shot, and, you know, again, they, they cut, it, you know, it's very Japanese where they didn't, <laughs> they didn't kind of let me know what was going on. There's, you know, if you're in a sound booth, you know, there's this kind of, there's this glass pane of small glass, really small because it has to be soundproof, you know, glass pane. Yeah. And then on the other side, there's a whole bunch of individuals. And so it delivers some lines and there's complete silence <laughs> and they're kind of talking to themselves on the other side. And I'm thinking like, is it, I mean, is this good? Is this bad? Do I suck? I mean, can you, can you tell me a little something, you know? And, and again, yeah, they're just like, okay, great. Thank you. I thought, man, I just, I, okay, I wish... It's a bit of feedback, anything. <laughs> I know, right? I hope it's okay, you know? And, I, and that's what it is. You know, they, they, they I think they, they wanted to find this character, and they, and they just said, okay, that's it. Like, that's, that's the guy. And th like I said, they just, they were behind their screen. They did their, they did their talking, and they just decided that I was the guy. So, what, you know, what can I say? They, they didn't need... Uh, any of this uh, voiceover stuff that I was thinking that I needed to do, you know? Yeah. yeah. And they just they just needed me, basically. Yeah, wow. I want to thank you for that story, because I remember reading some time ago that you were actually some dude living in Japan, and that contributed to why you got picked. So um, it's good to hear the truth. Yeah, you know, I, I had not. And in fact, my first visit to Japan was for this game, so... Yeah, don't believe everything you read on the internet. Indeed. <laughs> so, um, Corey, when you actually went to Japan, where did you go? Did you go to, like, Yamano's and Wita and places like that? Did you actually go to the places where the game is set? Or was it literally just to, like, Tokyo? Or Yeah, they, they put me... Well, first first of all, they, they, uh, they had me in Shinagawa, which is just below Tokyo. That was for the first game. They, um, you know, they set me up in uh, a nice hotel, actually, there. It was really nice. It was very kind of them to do that. And um, they, they, they always set me up, man, right next to the train station. And it was just one, you know, just a, a block away. And I get on the train and go straight up to uh, second headquarters there. And, or one of their, uh, one of their main buildings there. And um, the second time I was actually very close to it. And they gave me a, uh, they gave me a bike. They gave me this really cool, at the time, it was really cool because it was one of those folding bikes. Oh, yeah. it was the, one of the first of its kind, you know, and I was like, whoa, this is so super rad. And yeah, they, they, you know, the thing is they set me up, man. They really set me up when I got there. Yeah. And so I 
Well, when they got when they got me into Sega, they showed me all of the location, right? So they had massive amounts of data. They had um, data on the towns. They had uh, a huge picture portfolio, lots and lots of information. And they actually sat me down and showed me all these locations. And they talked about the time period, and they talked about what was going on in Japan at the time, and sort of economic status, and you know, people's. And they gave me background on people and and how people were feeling basically about about the, you know the status of Japan and stuff like that at the time so they really kind of sat me down and kind of immersed me again they didn't send me to these locations or show me these locations but the, again they had massive amounts of data and they did that for one and two and these in these locations in uh, in China as well they had all this they, they send teams of people to collect data Mm -hmm. And that, again, that's that's photos, and that's uh, uh, that's uh, local lore, and that's uh, information on people, and they took pictures of people's faces, and all kinds of stuff. You know, they they just massive amounts of data that they would collect, bring that back, and actually uh, show me that personally, which I thought was cool. No, I was just going to say with that, all that data, like, so how long you say you they sort of immersed you in it? Was this like? On a, over a single day or multiple days or a week or how long did it take before you even started recording? They would show me, th this would actually be over uh, several days, right? So they would show me some things, um, talk about what we're, you know, what we're going to be doing that day and what, what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. And we would go and do some recording and stuff like that. And they also gave me, um, this is also interesting, they gave me a Dreamcast and they gave me uh, the Japanese version subtitled in English so I could read it. And so they let me play the game too. So they said, yeah, just play the game every day. They had a console close to the recording room. So I, actually, if there were other people recording, I would just step out and I'd actually go and play the game. And I, they actually gave me a console that I could take home and I would actually play the game at home as well. So I was, you know, playing two different games trying to get <laughs> trying to get into different secrets and stuff like that but yeah as far as as far as the pictures and information and stuff like that yeah they would show me that stuff over gosh i think it was i think it was weeks they would just every day they would kind of bring me in and show me stuff about even the local people they did they, they did all they everybody had a name everybody had a blood blood type everybody had a uh a small background and they would each show me this, and they would give me stacks of paper sometimes of just information on random people without throughout the uh, you know the village or the store owners or whatever you know. And that would they would actually give me this information. I'd I'd take it and read it. I thought it was so interesting that somebody took all all the time and effort yeah. to do that. Do you still have that version of the game? Uh, no, no. The uh, the version that they gave me, um, you know, again when they set me up with everything, they. I guess they, you know, it's like they just came up, cleaned it all up. And I mean, I just, I just left, I just left everything there and they came by and picked everything up. And I, th I think that's what it was. They, they didn't, I guess they, <laughs> they let me borrow everything. You know what I mean? Ah. They, they, they didn't give me a, a Japanese console or anything like that. I guess it's just whole, part of the whole project, you know? So. That's too bad. Cause the, in the Shenmue community, we've been looking for that version for a long time just cause we like to, well, now that three's coming, it doesn't matter as much, but for a long time it was like, all right, we've played it with the English dub. We right. played it with the Japanese right. dub. What about Japanese dub with English subtitles? Like trying to play it different ways. Cause we had nothing to do for 14 years. <laughs> so, so it's not, it's not version with the English subtitles. Is that quite, like is that like a sort of a holy grail within the Shemu community then? I, I didn't know it existed until he said that. Wow. Um, there's been fan projects to do that. Yeah, the has. Yeah. Kagami, I think, made a, a version of that. There's a guy named Kagami who did that, but it only runs on uh, like the GDMU. Like you, you can't just like burn yeah. it. There's no original version like that. So whatever, Corey, whatever you had there was something special. I know. You know, it's funny. I, I, I didn't realize that it would, would be such a, uh, like you said, like a holy grail. I, kind of, I don't know. Maybe I would have uh, <laughs> tried, tried some attempt to, uh, to, you know what I mean, at least uh, have a copy for myself. But, yeah, I, I kind of I imagined, and it's funny, thinking back on it now, I think that I imagined that, oh, th this will probably just come out someday. You know, like maybe years later they'll be like, hey, you guys got uh, – the English version, would you guys like the Japanese version too? You know how, you know, they do that with a bunch of movies. They do that with Star Wars. Hey, do you want do you want the original version as well? Okay, well you have to wait a few years and then <laughs> 
you know, so I kind of figured that maybe they would release that. I thought, well, they have it. It's already been done. I thought I thought the sub was good, you know, so why not? Why not release it? And I figured they could make a little bit more money that way on a project that they don't even really have to do anything. You know, it's already been done. So They must have thought something similar because in Japan, they did the exact reverse. They did uh, your dub, but with Japanese subtitles. It was called U.S. Shenmue, oh, yeah, yeah. Which makes no real sense, but that's a thing. It exists. But they never released the version you're talking about, which is too bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought that it would be a, a, a great treat uh, for fans, you know, and I kind of thought that maybe there would be a way for them to make a little bit more money on the project. Like I said, on something that they've already built, something that's already been done. Mm-hmm. But, but hey, you know, I, I, I don't know. Maybe there was some legal reason behind it as far as, I don't know, compensation for actors or who knows, right? So Going back to the dubbing, Shenmue 2, you dubbed that in Japan as well? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they brought me back. That's interesting. <laughs> they want it to be dubbed in Japan, right? So it would be easy for me to... I, I could do this in my closet, you know what I mean? I could just soundproof mm-hmm. a room or something, you know? <laughs> I could I could dub it on my computer, and I could literally email it to them. But that's, that's not the Japanese way, right? So they yeah. want you in studio, and they want you there, right? So... They they can they can work with you. They can do these subtle nuances. They could they just want to be there to talk to you all day every day. You know what I mean? And it's it's I mean I, I, maybe Americans would say that's like some sort of dictatorship or maybe it's micromanaging or you know what whatever. A lot of Americans I don't know if they would be okay with that, but it's just their way. You know what I mean? Like they they just want to kind of have things contained that they can just ha- have a hold hold on all day every day you know what i mean and that's 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 just the way they like to do things so they they brought me and you know one other person or just a couple of yeah a couple of the people from the states and 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 uh brought me to japan everybody else that they had they had japanese talent and they had a bunch you know they had a bunch of people doing a bunch of different voices you know eric kelso did a bunch of voices so it's like they had a lot of japanese well, you know, quote unquote Japanese talent. A lot of people living in Japan that were doing voiceovers. Uh, Paul Lucas, God, he did. I don't know how many voices he did, but yeah, it's just like th- they had people there that they decided to keep, but they only brought a couple people, and that was including me, which I feel really great and honored. I think maybe they they're they're trying to get this. Uh, they're trying to get this kind of a little bit of a hybrid, I think, right? So they want this very Japanese character a very japanese feeling but they want somebody living you know in the states somebody who was born in the states somebody who you know they i think they just they just kind of trying to get this feeling that would be acceptable for people in the states but also acceptable for their idea of hasuki you know so they they want him to be this particular way but i don't know that's just my theory. You may not be able to answer this, but do you know if Sega bankrolled that or if that was Microsoft? Because Shen, because Shenmue 2 only was on the original Xbox uh, in English. So there's been, I'm just, that's one of those questions that's been out there for years amongst the community, like who paid for the dubbing? You may not be able to answer that, I understand, but if you can. <laughs> yeah, I can't, you know, and I, and I, I think, I think that I'm in, uh, I, I sort of have the same imagination, right? I think like, okay, well, the second one was on the Xbox. There was probably some sort of financing coming, yeah, from Microsoft. That, that, that's just my thought on that. And I, and I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't know. So. Well, thank you for being honest. About Adam, um, yeah. Adam, we've tried to get Peter Moore on the show multiple times, um, and if he oh, ever yeah, does come on the show, we'll uh, we'll get you on with him as well. So <laughs> maybe he can answer that. Question. I'd rather not. <laughs> It's funny. He's um, he's actually from uh, a city just up the road from where I'm from, which has got a bit of a rivalry. And I've been thinking that maybe it's because he's from Liverpool and I'm from Manchester that he won't come on to the uh, <laughs> podcast. But you know, if he does, then we'll yeah. ask him. It has to do with football, then. Is that that's what that's correct? Yeah, <laughs> probably, probably. <laughs> Most things, yeah, in most things in Britain, it's to do with football. That's the cause. <laughs> um, no, Corey, sorry, I was just going to say, just with you speaking about um, Japanese culture and like, that was like the first time you'd sort of had any experience of it. it yeah, like, I think one of the things that Shenmue is most is most praised for is the fact that it does communicate a bit of that Japanese culture to people outside of Japan who aren't Japanese. And I was wondering for you personally, Corey, if... 
your sort of interaction with Japanese culture has affected you in any way, personally, how you lived your life, you know, in general, your character, your way of, you know, sort of outlook on life? Yes, it has. You know, the thing is, is that I, I, I will say that I did have a taste of it with my with my martial arts background, right? So I did have a Korean teacher and I did have a Japanese teacher. An influence? Many, yeah, many rhythms and poise and uh, respect. And, you know, there, there's there's a certain type of, uh, you know, especially in a, a martial arts community, you know, there is there are these very strong Asian uh, male uh, types that I was exposed to when I was young. So I did have quite a bit of, you know, I did have a bit of exposure to that in the beginning. Yeah. Yes. In my younger in my younger life, and then moving to Japan and experiencing this the 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 work environment in Japan and this very strict hierarchy and a lot a lot of people in the West, uh, I think particularly nowadays, you know, when we when we think about business and stuff like that, we think about like crazy agile business people who are or maybe even uh, just totally disrupting um, uh, business social structure and we're just tearing all that stuff down so maybe here uh, in the west where we we don't understand that as much but yeah in Japan there's this very clear hierarchy you know what I mean and there's this very very sure. strong um, you know level of command right so and the thing is, is that I, I I know that, and I can respect that, and I can fit in with that because of because of my martial arts background. So it's like I know who I am, I know where I am, I know you know what what needs to happen, and so I can I can fit myself in there. And and that's in, and that's with everything, you know, and even just out in the world and shop owners and stuff like that. People of certain ages, there's this, there's a certain amount of respect that younger people give to people. When they are older because of you know just because hey they um they built the world that we live in you know so we give them yeah. we give them respect and this is just how things are and and thank you very much for you know making my life so wonderful you know what i mean like i said that's just how it is yeah. and and so does it has it affected me yes very much um and and i think you know i can love and respect both sides and i think both sides have a place there's a there's the western side of thinking and there's an eastern side of thinking and i think that is great that we live in a world where we can have this yeah hey talking about uh, philosophy right so so this yin and yang right so we have something that's just completely yeah. you know like i said these great businesses that we love and respect are very different than that you know what i mean their, their structure is very different or they're you know things like uh, you know, Zappos, they don't, it's like they don't have a, they don't have a, 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 that, that particular pecking order, you know, they don't have that anymore, you know, they, they all kind of, it's a communion almost, you know what I mean, of people working together. Yeah. And uh, so it's just like, yeah, I love the fact that we live in a world that we can have both, and I think that both have that place, and, and, I, and I can live in both of those worlds. I find it very interesting that you've got this history in martial arts. And I mean, I don't want to, it's, it's obviously not completely parallel, but martial arts really important in Shenmue as well, specifically to Rio. And I was just wondering, for you personally, Corey, what do you get from, the, from, from practicing martial arts? You know, all the typical things that you would think about in martial arts are, are true. When you're young, it does, tr it does teach you respect. You know, respect for not only your elders or your instructors, but for your peers as well. It does teach uh -huh. you confidence. You know, when you're young and you are in a world of adults, you know, it teaches you confidence to interact with those people or to, you know, not, not to be, not to be intimidated or scared by people of authority. Again, you know, it's like you, you respect these people, but you also have confidence as well. And it teaches you mental strength. Right. So that and that's just in everything in general. Right. So it teaches you that, uh, you know, like perseverance and the whole thing of never giving up. And, you know, if it's if something's hard, you're going to you're going to attack it head on, defeat it 
And if, if for some reason it just doesn't, it just, you can't defeat it that day, you fall back, try again in a different direction. And that's just everything in life. That's, yeah. that's just a, 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 trying to get a job. That's just, uh, you know, relationships with people maybe at the job. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, this me, me and this person are not getting along. It didn't work today. You know what? I'm going to go back, retreat, go in a different direction, and I'm going to try, you know, smoothing it out over here. You know what I mean? And, that, and, and again, martial arts will just teach you all, all these things. Respect, perseverance, um, gratitude, and it's just it, it, all, all these things that you can imagine martial arts doing. Like the, it's not some you know crazy mystical thing. It's just it's just when you have this structure in your younger life, it just teaches you to become a stronger, better person. And that's not only physically. People, I think a lot of people think physically. Yes, of course, you're going to be. You're going to be physically fit. You're going to be strong. You're going to, sure, um, yeah. you know, for some reason, if you ever have to defend yourself, I guess you you definitely could. But you know, it's interesting. Um, martial arts has helped me physically in ways that didn't necessarily mean I had to defend myself. When I was young, I got hit by a car, and maybe I could tell this story. Okay, so let me tell this. Let me tell <laughs> Go this. On, yeah. I'll try to make it short. So when I was young. Uh, we had gone on a field trip uh, to this park. It was all about water, and uh, we had a, uh, a, a an aquifer and all. Anyway, this, um, so that we we had walked there, and there's one part where we had to cross this street, and so there was one busy street that we had to cross. So they figured it was okay. Unfortunately, it wasn't. I I was an idiot, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And so me and my friend, so all the kids are lined up on the, on the side of the street and they're going to walk across all at the same time. So me and my friend, we think that we're going to be, you know, cool and we're going to, we're going to race across, right? So we kind of step, step <laughs> back a little bit from, from, we're kind of getting on our mark, you know? And the teacher says, uh, okay, everybody just wait a second. Okay, ready? Okay, set. And I jump the go because I want to beat my friend, right? So I jump out in stupidly jump out into the into the road and a car boom just hits me like just full-on hits me in fact it hits me so hard that both of my shoes fly off of my feet and so I'm it, I'm in the air and I'm coming down on the other side of the road and I do the shoulder roll that is like the the first basic thing that you learn in martial arts is the shoulder the one over the one shoulder roll right yeah. and I roll yeah. off the ground and I jump on the sidewalk on the other side and a car comes to a screeching halt right behind me wow. and oh. <laughs> and I thought to myself I was like wow I I think I almost just died, you know, and I and I yeah. thought to myself that martial, you know, now that reflecting back on that, I think you know martial arts really may may have saved my life, you know, probably saved me from major injury, yeah, and may have saved my life, and that's just a simple, like, you know what I mean? Like you're not punching somebody in the face, you're not like doing some crazy sword technique. No, I, it was just a shoulder roll, right? That that's it. One of the yeah. first basic things that you ever learn, and it may have like saved my life. You know, so that's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, I'm glad you learned that. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say it sounds like a quick time event from Shenmue that you were like maybe training for yeah, before. Exactly. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Oh! <laughs> Exactly. exactly. That's, that's brilliant. Um, just going back to the the game um, initially on your you know the first time you saw it. I mean, this was what um, two thousand ninety nine when you were going over to Japan. Let's see. I think it was. Mm, it may have been ninety nine. I yeah. think now. the Japanese version came out in ninety nine. So it was, I'm not. Pro, pro, so probably two thousand then. What were your initial impressions when you first saw it? I mean, obviously the game still looks fantastic now. I mean, back then. In 1999, you must have seen this and gone, "What the hell is this? It looks, looks fantastic." Yeah, you know, it start. It start, This game started to answer a lot of my frustrations, right? So, yeah, I was I was that guy, always thinking like, "Okay, when I'm playing an RPG, why is it that there's always text?" Yeah, you know, like I wonder what that person sounds like, and I, and of course, you know, when you're reading a book, you always have somebody's face yeah, or yeah. voice and mind and when i'm reading a book I always have that person's voice and mind and when i'm reading uh text on 
want a game, I have that person's voice in mind. Sure, yeah. But I always, I always think like, man, why, why don't they have, you know, somebody voicing this? I mean, you have all these graphics, you have all this stuff. I was like, surely an audio line couldn't be that. Yeah, because you're, I mean, you're a gamer anyway, aren't you? I mean, you were, you were a gamer before you were involved in Shemu, I, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I love games. I've been playing games. I mean, I, even, my, even my brother had an Atari. Yeah. And I played on that, too, you know, so... Uh, so yeah, I've, I've, I've played games. I can't, I can't even remember when I wasn't. Yeah. I, yeah. I always thought like, man, I really wish that they would dub these things. And yeah, it's like, if you're going through, uh, if you're going through a, a game, I always kind of wondered like, oh man, you can't, you're, you're stopped here. Like you can't, I mean, they, they still had, a, obviously they still had that a little bit, but the, 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 the space in the universe was expanded a lot more. So I felt less frustrated by limits right so i felt less frustrated by you know places that you could go and so i thought yeah i thought wow this is great because this is really starting to answer my frustrations you know oh i, I can go into the store and i can talk to this guy like yeah, yeah. okay you know is, is there a reason behind it i don't know maybe there isn't maybe there isn't maybe he does know where that black car went that day yeah, yeah. and even on a even on a, <laughs> you know, a smaller level <laughs> even on a smaller <laughs> level you can you can look through the house and and look in the drawers and, and look, open the cupboards and you go, you can yes. use the phone. Yes. And, and it's just like, this is just so immersive. It's some, I've never seen <laughs> this before in a game. What's going on? You know, you can get the Sega Saturn out from under the TV and, uh, and play on that. Is it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> slightly, I know, right? slightly anachronistic yeah. being set in 1986, but we'll let that slide. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's so great. You know, when, when I started playing that game, I was playing the Japanese version, of course, uh, you know, with the, with the English uh, sub. And yeah, I just I thought like, wow, this really is great. It's, thank you, thank you for for bringing it to that next level. The one, the level that I had been dreaming about for for such a long time. Yeah, you're right. You could take you take things out of drawers, you know, or whatever. Yeah, just, yeah. Great. It's not just a solid box. That's that's great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Do you think they'll bring you out to Japan for the third game? Do I think there'll be a like a Japanese version? Like no, no, no they'll, 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 you're going to be in that, right? The third one. Yes. All right. Do you think they're going to fly you out to Japan to record that? Oh, um, you know, that's a good question. My suspicion is no. I've I've heard uh, I've heard the idea that they're actually come here to L.A. Um, to do some recording. Now that that is just a rumor. You shouldn't be quoting me on that, but I know oh, everybody. We're, we're I, I know everybody will. It's all right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I I have a suspicion that they will actually bring a smaller team out here to LA, and that they'll do some recording here because I think that um, I think Yu Suzuki's team is a, a little bit less massive now. You know, it's not the mm -hmm. the, the machine that uh, Sega was at the time. So I think they're going to. You know, speaking of. East versus West, I think they're going to have a little bit more Western influence, perhaps, in their mm -hmm. team. They're going to have a smaller team that maybe more, you know, less people that do more in the project. And I think they're probably just going to have a smaller team bringing out here to L.A. is what I think they're going to do. I'm super jealous, by the way. I'd kill for even, like, one line in that game. That'd just be awesome. Some random NPC who's not helpful, has no information. <laughs> that would be what I would want to be. Being the superstar that you are, I'm sure you could, uh, you know. <laughs> I would just want to be a character who can't help you at all and completely sidetracks you for no reason. <laughs> like that, that would be my, like, yeah, that would be my goal. Just be totally useless. The use, the most useless NPC like, ever. Like Mr. Yukawa. In, yeah, you could be uh, the Yukawa. <laughs> yeah, Yukawa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that quite nicely brings us on to Shenmue 3, I think. Um, now, um, Corey, if you go on, next time you're on YouTube, type in Adam Korolik E3, Shenmue 3, and watch Adam just, like, lose his shit about <laughs> Shenmue 3, because it's brilliant. <laughs> well, the one after the, it was announced? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. My only regret there is that I didn't record my live reaction. My girlfriend was trying to talk me into it. She's like, they might do something. I'm like, no, they won't. <laughs> and I, like, <laughs> and I, I was like, don't waste my time. And I never regretted something so much in my life. <laughs> no, I won't. I was so angry about it. Because <laughs> I was so burned after all those. I Actually, the sad part about that is a, like a week before it, I posted a video saying like, guys, this is pointless. It's not going to happen this year. It was a huge mistake. <laughs> Can I ask, just just quickly, Adam, what did you think when you posted the picture of the forklift? 
Uh, I didn't think much of it because, I mean, I thought he's just doing something and then people are running with it. I mean, like, there's so many times where little images like that people blow out of proportion. And, uh, and specifically regarding the thing I was just talking about, there was this supposedly leaked image of Shenmue 3 getting announced at E3 because of Square Enix. And everybody's like, oh, it must be real. Uh, look it up. It, it's and So I was like, guys, that isn't real. You have to stop taking these things all so seriously. You're, you're grasping at everything. Now, ironically, I turned out to be wrong, except that that picture is was made up. But with the, the, the forklift, yeah, it was nice that you was doing that, but I thought maybe he was just joking around. I didn't put much stock <laughs> into it. I'm glad to be wrong. I have never been so happy in my life to be wrong. But, yeah, so I, I my initial reaction to the that image was just – Whatever, guys. Come on. He's just he just probably went outside, saw it, and was like, ah, on Instagram. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you know, like I post pic- like I like I said, I was in L.A. recently, and I, I I took a picture of burritos. It doesn't mean I'm confirming that I'm going to open up a restaurant that exclusively serves burritos. Like sometimes you just there isn't much thought other than ha, ah, funny. You know, you just move on. That was my reaction. I'm so glad I was wrong. I'm glad he was sending us some sort of subtle message. But, yeah, that's not what I guessed. You know, the thing is, too, is that, yeah, you're right. With all these images that came out over the years, yeah, me, me being the, uh, the the actor, people would be like, people would contact me immediately. Oh, my God, so you're going to be in three. This is going to be awesome. Tell me all about it. And I'm like, uh, d- uh, wh- what? And, you know, and I would, I would look at the picture and be like, oh, yeah, I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I hope they're not doing three without me. Oh, that that would make me sad. Oh, you know, and then yeah. So for years that happened, right? Oh, and I remember one time I was in Vegas, and um, there was a gigantic arcade, and I was just letting my daughter um, just mess around on the arcades, right? And there's, you know, Sega does really great arcade games, and there's a whole massive section of Sega games. And I had taken a picture. It's, in fact, it's still on uh, my profile. And, uh, yeah, I had taken a picture with the Sega logo. And people were like, yeah, he's in Japan. It's <laughs> happening. It's going to work. <laughs> so, yeah, any any like image like that, yeah, people – so I, I understand why you were not yeah. super excited about it. So. I can't even imagine how bad you get it or did get it for Shenmue 3, like with – the little warning signs and stuff like people email me or used to email me personally and be like, all right, when is it coming? Damn it. Like why, why haven't, you know, where is it? And I'm like, I don't dude, I don't even work for Sega. Like I don't have any real connection to this, you know, like I, I was telling them on the last podcast, I have like a bunch of dreamcast development hardware and I've shown it in videos and people used to tell me like, why don't you just make the game? Why don't you just do it? Turn them on. The game will come out. Why aren't you doing that? Like, so as someone who has an actual direct connection to Shenmue the way you do, I can't even imagine how much you've had to deal with that over the years. So, yeah, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, it just it just happened. um, It just happened all all the time. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, I think I think that's another thing, too, why why I was in that. Yeah. You know, I hope that it really does come out because people people just do massive campaigns and whenever any any image like that comes out there's a huge explosion all over you know my facebook or whatever either my twitter or whatever you know and i always thought like yeah hmm. maybe it'll come out someday maybe it will you know but <laughs> I, I, was, I was always quietly optimistic I so Corey, did you find out the same time as the rest of us that shemmy 3 was coming out or it was being kickstarted or... yeah i i did mm-hmm. yeah i i was not privy to any information um, again, you know, when, when they had that, that other voice actor come in there, I, you know, again, it was a big, super secret, you know, project is insular. Nobody knew about it. Nobody. And like I said, I had even called other people, um, uh, from Japan that were involved in the project and they didn't know about it either. So wow. yeah, just so super secret. The, the way, the way it happened is, is that I was, con- I picked up my daughter, I think from, class you know actually she's in taekwondo now so i think mm-hmm. i had picked her i had picked her up from her martial arts class and i was bringing her home and i had been hearing my phone ping you know but i was driving so i wasn't paying attention to it you know and uh, i was just walk just walking into my place and the phone kept going and and my wife had her uh had her pad and she looked at me kind of you know with that look in her eyes and she's like did you hear <laughs> i'm like uh, 
<laughs> I thought, um, and I and I kept hearing my phone pinging, you know, and I was like, I, oh, that's probably my Twitter, right? Oh, and I and I thought about it for just a second, and I said, is it Shenmu? And she says, yeah. <laughs> so that that's how I found out about it. My wife just kind of gave me that look, that kind of almost wide eyed look, like, did you hear? <laughs> you know. I'm I'm a bit I'm a bit disturbed because your wife sounds like solid snake from yeah. Metal Gear. <laughs> oh, I know. well, you know, it did you hear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's my facial hair, you know, I can't it's my beard, I can't. Corey, did you um did you back the Kickstarter? Are you allowed to back the Kickstarter? Yeah, you know, I I had um I <laughs> as as people know, I did a lot of uh sort of campaigning for it as mm. well. I did. Yep. Uh, I did a lot of uh, videos, and man, I made a bunch of. I, I had made. I made sure that a bunch of people. You know, even my mom donated to it as well. So. <laughs> even my mom donated to the project as well. So yeah, I had. I yeah, I had, and I and I also got as many people as I could to donate. I was like, hey, you know, my project's going off, and this is what people are doing. If you guys could do it. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, we did the same on our on our website and on our page. You know, we got people to uh, contribute. One question though. Did you actually, um, was that you who bid, um, oh, sorry, backed it with £10,000 so you could have lunch with uh, Yu Suzuki? Oh, yeah, so I could have lunch with him. No, I didn't. I did not give the £10,000. No, I didn't. I did not give that much. No. It was dollars. Oh, like, sorry. Yeah, pounds, it's like, that's like 17 grand. <laughs> Right, I'd have to, I'd have to uh, donate my car. <laughs> yeah, I can relate to that phone explosion thing, man. When when Shenmue Three was announced, my phone went insane. I started actually getting calls from strangers, <laughs> like <laughs> viewers somehow bothered to get my phone number and started calling me, and was like, "Dude, Shenmue," I was like, "Who are you?" But thank you. But well, <laughs> like, then, dude, Shenmue, and then just hung up. Like... <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. I didn't. I didn't actually pick it up. I was overwhelmed. But like, I would check my voicemail later, and I was like, "All right." <laughs> Adam, just to come back to you slightly, um, you've been. You sure. mean, like I said earlier on in the podcast, you've got. You've just hit sixty-five thousand subscribers. You've mm-hmm. uh, just come back from Germany, Gamescom, I believe. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was over there. I mean, what was that like? Uh, did you get recognized? Did you get asked for autographs and that kind of thing? Gamescom, I got recognized three times. Only one by a Shenmue right. fan. A guy named Dave, he's just walking by and he does like a double take and then he just turns around and he's like, hey, he just like grabs my hand and he's like, dude, hey, I just want to thank you for like that video you did about, you know, the Shenmue and like why Sony's not funding it. And just dude, thank you. He was clearly like in a rush, but he just wanted to say thanks and then moved on. I got recognized by like two other people um, for different reasons, but yeah, no, that was fun. Uh, Gamescom was a lot of fun. There was no real Shenmue presence there of any kind. Yeah, I went to PAX Prime in Seattle last weekend. Oh, yeah. That was a little more interesting in regards to Shenmue for two reasons. Um, one, I met Gio Corsi okay. very briefly. Now, he's a, he's the current like head of the independent division of mm-hmm. PlayStation. He's one of the uh-huh. guys who was like most crucial in bringing Shenmue yeah. back. Um, cool. I just happened to find him like in the lobby of a, a hotel. And I walked over to him and was like, are you Gio Corsi? And he's like, yeah. He seemed kind of pissed off about something. So I, I didn't really want to bother him very much. But the Shenmue fan in me couldn't avoid it. I was just like, hey, I just want to say thank you for everything you did with Shenmue. And he was like, oh, yeah, right. Like, I think as soon as I mentioned Shenmue, he was kind of like, oh, God, please don't talk to me. <laughs> like, because I think he, he kind of had the vibe of like, don't, just, just, uh, it's fine. We did it. It's just, uh, That's kind of the vibe he had. But he let me take a selfie with him. But, uh, yeah, he, he, I thanked him regardless to his face. And then I ran into uh, his, his Microsoft equivalent is uh, named Chris Charla. Mm-hmm. And I ran into him and he actually sat down with like, talked to me for about 10 minutes. And I happened to be wearing a Shenmue shirt at the time. And he was like, oh, Shenmue, I love that series. And he was just like, hey, did you back the Kickstarter? I did. And I was like, yeah. So, you know, whenever you hear people being like, oh, Microsoft versus Sony fanboy wars, like those, the guys who actually work there, they don't care. They, they, they like each other. They work together. And, uh. Yeah, I, I, the sense I got from Chris was that they wish they had gotten Shenmue, but they had other things they were working yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, because they're only people at the end of the day, and they must have a love for games, otherwise they wouldn't yeah. work in the industry. Yeah, they all yeah. do. Yeah, yeah that, he was super excited about it, and he was just he was more excited about it coming to, uh, I guess, to the PS4 than Gio Corsi yeah. was, who actually runs the PS4. <laughs> So n- never, you know, don't ignore fanboyism. They they love games. Yeah, they yeah. just love games, and they apparently love good ones because Shenmue's coming. Oh. 
and they were excited. Corey, uh, another question for you. Um, I mean, we're coming to the end now. I know I, I wanted to keep this quite brief, uh, but um, how often do you get asked about um, looking for sailors? Oh, man, are you kidding me? <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think I've avoided an I don't think I've ever avoided a conversation yet, uh, and and we let's see we have uh, just a few minutes left. No, I, yeah, it, you almost made it, dude. Four <laughs> minutes left, and he just had to do it. No, he I was had not to slip ask. it in. The only ask. reason I ask is because I used to be in the navy, so technically I'm a sailor. So you you know you oh, you hey, found it's me. True. I found one. <laughs> is this a sailor I'm looking for? <laughs> hey, dude. Hello. <laughs> I got some, hey hey I got some questions for you. All right. So. Yeah, no, the, you know, I, I've said this, I've said this before, but the one of the crazy, uh, I don't know, one of the great things about Shenmue is these, these, these crazy one-liners, right? <laughs> like, people love that. You know, not, not only is it a great game, it, it's, it's, it, it has such a, such a, I think that's why it has a cult following, why, right? Because you have a great game, you have a great. Um, you know, it was innovative for the time, and you know all those things. We can talk about how great it was, but yeah, there, there's all these crazy one-liners that are just hilarious, and people talk about it all the time. And I get, I still get tweets <laughs> all the time, and just that's all that people talk about. Like, hey, hey, you you want to get sweaty? Like, oh, man. <laughs> you know. <laughs> So it's just it's just all the time, all day, every day, and it's I don't know. I think it's hilarious. I, I'm not annoyed by it at all. I think it's I think it's hilarious. I, I can't get over it. It's funny. Oh, that's that's oh. fantastic. Um, we're gonna sort of draw it to a close here, but um, I just wanted to thank you immensely from you know from myself, Rob, and the rest of the team at the Junkyard. Um, to you, Adam, for for agreeing to come on the show again. I know you've got loads of stuff on and you're really busy. Oh, no problem. And to you as well, Corey, um, basically a legend in, in Dreamcast folklore. Um, so, yeah, thank totally. you very much for yeah. coming on the show. Yeah, it was really an honor to, to talk to you, Corey. Thank you. Yeah, you know, guys, really the honor is mine, seriously, because the game doesn't happen without you guys. It just doesn't happen without you guys. You guys are totally responsible for getting it made. I mean, let's let's be honest, right? I mean, there are people out there, the developers, you know, the people who, who really appreciate and love the game and wanted to do it, but it would not have happened without everybody listening, without you guys, and you know, without Adam. You know, thank thank you guys so much because you got Shenmue 3 made. You guys did it. Thank wow. you. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. I'm lost for words. Um, Adam, is there anything you wanted to, um, to add or...? I, yeah, I think if it's possible, there was a Yu Suzuki interview he just did, like three pages mm-hmm. long, um, that was floating around that I think everyone should read. He just talks a lot about current game development, gives everybody a big update. Possibly put that in the link in the description so that everybody can yeah. catch up on that if they're interested in how Shenmue 3 is currently progressing. He talks a lot about the original development, too, and a lot about the original programming tricks they used to make the game be as big as it was and create open world. And I, I can't believe somehow we didn't talk about it. But, yeah, no, you, we should. We That's something people should read if they're really into Shenmue. Put a link to that in the, uh, in the show notes. Um, yeah, so it just uh, remains for me to say um, to people listening, thanks very much for, for downloading and listening to the podcast. Um, again, thanks to Adam and Corey for joining us. Uh, and, of course, uh, you, Rob. If you wanted to uh, leave a comment or speak to us directly, you can find us on Twitter at Sega Junkyard. Um, I'm on Twitter at Tom Lee C, and Rob, you are on Twitter at R Nicholas J. Guys, did you want to sh- give your Twitters out as well in case people want to contact you? Uh, yeah, no, I'm just, uh, Corey Marshall, Voiceover Pro. I'm at Adam Korlick. I also have a YouTube channel with the same name. People, if you just go to YouTube and type Adam, it will actually auto fill with the rest of your name. So you have to get to at least the K. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> there's a there's a guy named I think his name is like Adam Kovesh or something. I think he works on Machinima. Right. I met him once because I do work with Machinima too, but he's he's still beating me. <laughs> But yeah, if you wanted to get onto our Facebook page, it's facebook.com forward slash The Dreamcast Junkyard. Uh, we actually have the, the main site as well, which is www.thedreamcastjunkyard.co.uk. And uh, and yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks very much for listening. And again, thanks to our guests. Thank you for having thanks me. Thanks so much, Rob, Tom. Thank yes. you so much. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Please stop this disc now. Now, 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 now.